This lesson deals with equivalent sources and source transformations. In the previous section, we took a look at series and parallel combinations of resistances and used this to solve problems. Are there similar properties for voltage sources and current sources? And the answer is yes and no. Take a look at this first property. This is voltage sources in series. If I take K voltage sources and connect them in series, the equivalent voltage is the sum of the K voltage sources. Now, why would that be true? Well, let's hook up K voltage sources, and then let's find an equivalent voltage using Kirchhoff's voltage law. Say that that's our equivalent voltage. So the rise in voltage would equal the drop of V1, V2, all the way through V sub K. So what we've got here then is a summation of voltages, which we could then represent by just a single value. And this would create the same effect at terminals A and B as the original connection of voltage sources. A good example of this would be a flashlight. You would hook up cells in series. This could be two or four and get a larger voltage so we could apply that to a light bulb and get more light out of it at a higher voltage. Now what about having current sources in series? Well, if you had two current sources in series, the current that enters the node has to equal the current that leaves the node. But series means to be the same current. So the only one that would work is if the currents were identical to each other. How about parallel combinations? This is the next property, current sources in parallel. If I take K ideal current sources and connect them in parallel, the equivalent current source is the sum of the K current sources. Show them all pointing up. And again, some of these could be negative, but let's find an equivalent current, say entering this box. Okay, we'll call that I equivalent. Then we could do Kirchhoff's current law on the next page. And so the currents that enter the node would have to equal the currents that leave the node. And here's just one leaving and that's I equivalent. So what we've got is the summation of all the currents. Again, some of these could be positive and negative. I'll show them all in the same direction, so we just got a summation here, but the values could be positive or negative. The same is true for the voltages above. And that's how you prove that theorem. What about having voltage sources in parallel? Parallel means the same voltage. If they were unequal voltage sources, then hooking them in parallel would be violating Kirchhoff's voltage law. This would violate the conservation of energy. This property is called source transformations. Suppose that I have a voltage source and a series resistance. I've got some other circuitry hooked up here. I replace this by a parallel combination of a current source and a resistance. If I pick this current source equal the voltage that was here divided by the resistance. And then I take the resistance that's here and put it over here. Now what equivalence means is that at these terminals, you get the same voltages and currents as you do here. In other words, you can't tell one box from another. But this three lines here means implies, and it's actually two directional. It means from this way, but also means the other way. In other words, if I start with a current source in parallel with a resistance, and transform that back into a series voltage source and a series resistance. Value of the voltage source would be the current times the resistance, and the resistance would be the same value as it was before. So it works in both directions. And again, what's inside the yellow box produces the same effect at terminals A and B. You can't tell one from the other in terms of taking measurements. Now, why would this be true? Let's take the first case and let's just separate it. And let's talk about the voltage and current associated with terminals A and B. The rise in voltage here would be V sub S. The drop would be I times R and then the value of V. Let me graph this. And so I'm going to put uh, I on the Y axis and V on the X axis. So let me solve this for, for I. I'll take V sub S, subtract V, and then divide by R. I could write this as the form of the equation of a straight line. There was Y equals MX plus B. So I could take the minus V over R and write that as minus 1 over R times V. That would be my slope. And I'd be left with the term V sub S over R. And that would be my intercept. In other words, when the voltage V is zero, the current is V sub S over R. That's actually this point right over here. Go back to the first equation, maybe a little easier. If I let the current to equal zero, then V sub S equals V. And that's actually this point right over here. Two points in a straight line, the line will connect up between those two points. And really, what can happen here is anything along this line. Now let's do the same thing for the second circuit. The parallel combination, and again, let's write the equations in terms of this. The current that's coming to the node is I sub S, and the current that's leaving the node would be the current in that direction in I, but this current is V over R. We get a relationship between I sub S and the voltage and the current. Yeah, let's make it Y equals MX plus B. Let's put I on the Y axis. I'm going to solve this for I, bring this on the other side of the equation. I could write this then as minus 1 over R times V plus I sub S. And again, the equation form here is that of a straight line. 
when v is equal to 0, I would have the i equals i sub s, and that's this point right here. And then if I were to let i equals 0, I would have i sub s is equal to v over r, I just multiply here by r, and so v would equal i sub s times r. This is the plotting of all possible solutions for the second circuit. If I make these equal to each other, then this point on top and this one must be equal, and then likewise the bottom ones must be equal. And what that says then is that i sub s is v sub s over r, and that v sub s is i sub s over r. And that's exactly what we had up over here. We picked these relationships, and they're actually the same equation, just solving for v or solving for i. These are equivalent to each other. They create exactly the same effect at the outer terminals. And you can't tell the difference between the two. They're two very different circuits. They produce the same effect. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose that I want to solve for the current into this positive terminal of the battery to find how much power it's absorbing. Really, how long would it take to charge it? I don't really care about the intermediate voltages and currents. I just want to solve for this one. So I'm going to use source transformations and equivalent resistances to reduce this to one loop problem. Let's start over on the right-hand side here and work our way to the left. I've got two current sources here. They're actually in parallel with each other. There's a resistance between them. Now, when you have things in parallel, they have the same voltage across them. You can actually rearrange them in any order you want. So I'm going to slide that one over to here, make it point upward by changing the sign of it. I can just add these two together, and I get 8 milliamps. I'm going to do a source transformation with 8 milliamps and 4K. I'm going to multiply those two and the milli and the k cancel, and I get 32 volts. What I've got is a resistance, a resistance, a voltage, and a resistance, all in series. Just like in the parallel case, these share the same current, so I can actually change them in any order. It's like, so I'm going to slide this over here, so now that the three resistances are in series, and I'll replace them by a single resistance, whose value is the sum, which would be 20k. So this would be like having one 20k resistance. Let's do a source transformation. Let's replace this by a current source in parallel with a resistance. The current is going to be pointing towards where the plus sign was, and I'm going to be having the same resistance here, and the current source will be 32 volts divided by 20k. On the process of doing that, we eliminated some nodes again, but again, all we care about is the current going into that plus terminal. Now, what I've got is a 20k in parallel with a 30k, and I could take the product over the sum, and it turns out to be 12k in this case. Then I could take that combination and convert it to a voltage source in series with a resistance. So I'll take the 12,000 ohms, multiply that by the 1.6 milliamps, and you get 19.2 volts. And then you have a resistance in series that's just equal to 12k. Combine these two into one resistance of 16k, and now I have a one loop problem. So I want to solve for the current in this direction. That's going to create a drop like this. And then we can just do cure cause voltage law around the loop. So the rise in voltage is 6. The rise in voltage is I sub S times 16K, and the drop is 19.2. So 19.2 minus 6 divided by 16K is that current, which is 825 grams. And so the power absorbed would be that current times the voltage of the battery, 6 volts. So about 5 milliwatts. This is an example of doing a source transformation, series and parallel resistances to solve for an unknown.